Hey everybody y'all, this is Daniel Nicholson with Nicholson Farms and welcome back to another video. Uh, if you hear the wind, I am sorry. I've been trying to make this video for the past three days, but past two days we've gotten about three inches of rain in the afternoon. So it was raining, I couldn't make the video, and now I'm crouched down behind the boards of the barn uh, trying to cut the wind out. But we're going to talk about something today that we haven't really talked too much about our channel, and that is our horses. I hope you enjoy the video and stick with us and check them out. Like I said, I'm super sorry about the wind. Uh, it's been storming here for the past couple couple afternoons. And I think we got another storm rolling in. If you can see those clouds behind us. So I wanna go ahead and get this video done, get it out to you. Um, but I wanna talk about our horses today. I haven't really featured them much on our channel. Uh, we have two quarter horses. Uh, this is my boy Cisco right here. I've had Cisco um, since I was probably about 13 years old. He's a great horse, um, one of a kind really. I'll probably never find another one like him. He is literally like a dog. You can put anybody on him to ride. And back behind me, this buckskin, her name is Cheyenne. Uh, Cheyenne, if I had to guess, is probably about 12, 13 years old. I've had her for uh, right at five, six years now. Uh, she's not somebody you wanna put anybody on, but I do ride her from time to time. I haven't rode in a long time, uh, just cause I, I don't have the time. Um, and uh, honestly, my other vehicle wasn't that dependable pull the horse trailer. Uh, so it might be something we get back into. Uh, now we got a, something that'll pull the horse trailer. But like I said, Cisco's like a dog. Uh, he thinks he's gonna get a treat. Um, I'm gonna move them to their new pasture. And then we're gonna talk to you about why I think goats are, I mean, horses are important on our farm and let you see him. It might be a camera hog. But we're gonna go ahead and get him moved real quick. Let me put a halter on Cisco. Uh, Cheyenne should just follow Cisco into the new pasture. And we'll talk about why I'm moving them around and why I think they're important. Now that I got Cisco on the halter, like I said, Cheyenne will be right behind. She's kind of hard to catch in the pasture. I'm not gonna stress her out by catching her when I can just lead one into the other pasture and call it good. So they're going into where the goats just came out of. I'd say it's probably a half acre little spot. Uh, the goats were in there for about two to three days. I actually moved the goats yesterday. Um, but it was raining, started pouring down rain, so I didn't get a chance to uh, actually move the horses as well. Typically, as soon as I move the goats, I'm moving the horses behind them. And we're just gonna keep rotating them. So why is that important to us? Goats and horses have uh, different digestive systems and they're dead end hosts for each other, meaning the worms that the, go the horses pick up from the goats the horse's digestive system will actually kill that, that parasite. And whenever they defecate or poop back onto the ground, uh, they're not putting those worms back onto the ground for the goats to pick up. And same thing with the goats. The goats are eating the worms that the horses may have, and it's a dead end host. They're not gonna come out um, surviving. And so what I've been doing uh, for the past, really for the past couple years, is rotating my horses behind my goats. And by doing that, um, I'm lowering that worm load. And here in the past two weeks, what I've started to do is I'm seriously rotating animals. Uh, I guess you can call it high stocking, high stocking rate density or whatever that term is uh, for, as, for as the pasture. But basically I'm putting a lot of goats on like a half an acre and I'm letting them graze that down. And then I'm moving them about every two to three days. And then I'm bringing my two horses on that same half acre uh, excuse the wind and that'll allow me to uh, basically clean up my worm load uh, the horses are eating some grasses that the goats aren't eating the goats are eating more of the forbs and the bushy kind of the 
plants in the pasture. They will eat a lot of the grass, but the horses are definitely consuming most of the grass. And it just kind of works out together. Uh, both of them have different preferences. I'm gonna try to duck down out of the wind. Both of them have different preferences on what they want to eat. And like I said, the main goal of that is to, to wor lower my worm load for my goats. And also moving animals this quickly, I'm hoping to enhance my pastures by leaving more forage covering the ground, putting carbon into the soil uh, to help the, help the soil quality grow. And I'm just using these animals to help me out doing that. And you know, yeah, it's another mouth to feed by having these two horses here but I cannot remember a time growing up that we did not have um, horses on our property. I grew up riding, I think there's a picture somewhere of me on the saddle with my dad, and I might have been two, three months old. So horses have always been a big part of my life. Uh, in the past couple of years, I've kind of gotten out of it a little bit, um, but it's definitely something that I can see myself getting back into. Um, hopefully, if we do, uh, we'll bring y'all along on that journey but they're kind of wondering why I got them pinned up in this little catch pen barn area. So I'm gonna let them out in the pasture. They're gonna have some fresh grass that they haven't been on in a while and they should like it. So let me get the camera turned around and let them out in their new pasture for the next couple days. I said she was a mean thing or a wild thing. She let me pet her right here now. So. She ain't too bad. So like I said, the horses will be on this about half acre for the next two to three days, depending on how, let me get bowed to the wind again, depending on how fast they eat uh, the grass that I, is left from over from the goats. The goats were in there for about uh, two and a half days. I moved them kind of early. Uh, a lot of fescue in that little spot, but there's not a lot of other stuff for the goats. So the goats are in another about a half acre lot and they've been there for one day already uh, I'll probably let them hang out there for another two days and then we'll be moving the horses over to where they are and then they'll move on to the next half acre and we're just going to keep bouncing around. Doing this will allow us to, number one, we're outrunning the worms in the goat herd. We're bringing the horses in behind them to clean them up and we're also giving the rest of our, we're only using an acre at a time between both the horses and the goats. So we're leaving the rest of the six acres that we have uh, pretty much untouched uh, minus brisket and our two billies uh, but that's another little situation i've got to work out of how we're going to move these goats down there with them billies um, but basically we're letting our grass rest a good while uh, we're outliving that I, I mean it's enough time in between where the uh, life cycle of that that worm is disrupted and also it just uh, leaving uh, litter on top of your ground in the form of grass and dead grass and stuff like that it's just enhancing your soul and running this many animals on a piece of property uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to learn how to control the worms uh, by rotating our animals and also we're gonna have to be um, better caretakers of our grass and our soil um, soil starts everything so we need to need to work on the soil quality by by leaving some grass behind uh, putting some nutrients in there that it needs through manure or fertilizer, whatever it needs. Um, but that's another topic for another day. But I just kind of wanted to show you the horses. I know you've seen them in our um, intro video and we haven't really talked about them too much and I haven't really shown you. And if it wasn't windy, I had planned on kind of standing beside them and talking a whole lot longer, but it is super windy. But I really appreciate y'all hanging out with us. I hope you liked the video. Um, this is not just a horse thing. For us, it's a horse thing just because yeah, that's what we have available. There all there will always be a horse on this property, um, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you can do it with cows. Cows are the same way. They're a dead end host for the worms for the horses and the worms for the goats. So running them together will help. Uh, also, but the only difference in that is the sheep. Sheep and goats um, carry the same parasites. Uh, so you, that that's not really helping anything if you run goats and sheep together. But running.
other animals or other herbivores with your goats will help you out i'm sorry i'm talking a little fast i'm trying to get this video done uh, get out of this wind so i really appreciate y'all hanging out with us if you enjoyed hanging out with us uh please hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and leave us a comment uh what animals do y'all use to kind of help y'all's parasites um i hope this video was helpful for you and we'll talk more about the um rotational stuff coming up um, i've got some pretty interesting videos coming up that you might want to check out um, the next video will probably be in the garden we got several different things in the garden going on and also i'm going to try my first hand at, at cutting and baling my own hay this year so y'all don't want to miss that but like i said i really appreciate it and we'll see y'all on the next one